What is up, people? My name is Tim Buell. Today I'm talking about a program called Ableton. Ableton is a program that people use. It's a DAW, a DAW, a digital audio workstation. You don't have to know that. You don't have to care about that information. But I'm going to be talking about it not as a recording program today, but as a program for running backing tracks live, whether that's just click track or click track and backing tracks, loops, whatever. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and Ableton is pretty much the industry standard, other than Pro Tools, for running tracks live in a live environment from stage. It is so flexible. I love using it. Um, and this is going to be my top five tips for using it in a live environment to run tracks. So let's get into it. The first tip I have is uh, something that might help you if you ever, which you probably will, but if you ever find yourself in a live environment playing the tracks and you get off from them, this will help with that. So every now and then, you know, the band doesn't go to the course at the right time or, you know, something gets screwed up with the progression and someone loses track of where they're at and for whatever reason, the band gets off from the tracks. So what you want to do in that scenario is avoid killing tracks completely because if you kill tracks completely, you no longer have click track and that leaves room for the band to speed up or slow down and then if you ever do try to come back in with tracks, you might be off from the tracks tempo wise and then it's going to be even more of a mess. So to avoid all that, uh, I like using arrangement view. So if you look at the computer, this is arrangement view, this is session view. I like using arrangement view because as you can see here, my marker, which the marker is right here, my marker, when I hit Z, skips between, or A, skips between markers. So if you're an advanced Ableton user, if the band gets off from the tracks, chances are you can set it up to where you can advance to another marker and get the tracks back synced up with the band. But in the meantime, the tracks might not be in the same spot, which can create a very terrible sound for the people listening. You know, if, if someone's playing a four chord and the tracks are playing a five chord at the same time, it's not going to sound good. So I have programmed all my Ableton sessions so that when I hit the letter S, you can see over here, right here, when I hit the letter S, this turns blue. What that means is that click track, the click audio track in my Ableton session for arrangement view and for session view, but we're talking about arrangement view right now, is soloed. So what that means, let me show you what that means. If we are playing this second song here, we're in the course, we're playing along, and somehow we get off, I can hit S, now all you're hearing is click track and I can wait for us to get back on, make sure that everything's good, and then I can hit Z to jump to the next section, jumps to the next section, and then I can hit S again. Now we're synced back up. Everybody hears the tracks again. So we didn't have to lose the click track, but I got us back on track without, you know, everything being crazy. So that's my first tip, is using S, or any key that you program, use S to solo out click, to have a fail safe, problem solver for when tracks might not be lined up with the band. Okay, that's tip number one. Remember we have five of these. So tip number two is in session view, I recommend using set notes, okay? So set notes are uh, something that I really like session view because if you look over here, you can see, I can see my whole set list at a glance. I can just look over there and say, okay, cool. This is the order. but. I like taking it a step further, making it even more foolproof, even more dumb proof, uh, because, you know, as we're going through, if I want to talk between this second and third song, I'm going to insert a little note that says talk here, because then I don't have to remember it. I don't have to write it down somewhere else. I can just look over there and say, oh yeah, I'm going to talk here. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. And then we're synced up, ready to go, and then we can play the next song and I can, I just don't have to think about anything, it's all written right there, and that seems super easy, but in the course of a show, if you're playing it for an hour and a half, 
and the singer wants to talk a bunch of places or some other crazy stuff happens, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you might remember that when you're talking through the set, but live when it's really hot and you're super sweaty and the snare drum stand is broken or you have to tune your guitar between songs and whatever, it's really nice to be able to look over and say, okay, I gotta fix that, I gotta fix my tuning and I know that right there we're gonna talk so I can fix it there. Or uh, you don't ever jump the gun because one thing you really don't want is to start tracks when people aren't ready. Because every now and then you do that and, you know, tracks kick in right, there's no count in and tracks kick in right at the top and you can't really take it back. Once tracks are started and people have heard them out front, you're kind of locked in and you don't want to do that. So tip number two, use set notes in session view. Tip number three is using MIDI notes to manipulate arrangement view. So standard in arrangement view, when you hit play using spacebar, it's going to, the playhead is going to keep scrolling until you hit stop again using spacebar. So that's fine if you want to start and stop every song manually, but most people don't. I like it so that if a song's going to stop, I don't have to remember for it to stop because there's always a chance that in between songs, I forget to hit spacebar to stop it because I'm fixing something and then the tracks start without me wanting them to for the next song because the playhead kept scrolling. I never want that. So, if you look at arrangement view here, uh, there is a little MIDI region right here. And what that MIDI region does is it, I've programmed it to stop the playhead automatically. So if I hit play here, typically it would keep going forever, but when it hits that MIDI note, audio stops, right? So I have set up a MIDI note to control that and let that do that. I have a full video that shows you how to do that and in the link, there's a link in the description down below that is uh, timbulemusic.com slash Ableton Top 5 and if you go there, it, there's a blog post that has a PDF handout of, uh, you know, kind of a recap of all this and some resources and in that PDF there's a video on how to set up MIDI notes to do this. But you can set up MIDI notes to do a ton of stuff. For instance, you can set up MIDI notes to loop sections, right? So if I expand this here, I'm gonna do this real quick. And again, uh, if you don't know what's going on, that is understandable because I have not explained it, but you should check out uh, you should check out the check out the video I have on this because it walks you through this pretty seamlessly. So, I've set it up so that for this section right here, this section is going to loop until I tell it not to. So that MIDI note that it's about to cross sends the playhead back to the last marker. So as you can see, right when it crosses the MIDI note, the marker moves back and then at the end of that measure, it goes back to the previous marker. And if I hit Z, it'll advance to the next marker. So again, pretty advanced, but I have a whole video on that in that uh, handout on my blog, so definitely go get that. Okay. Tip number four is using the duplicate time feature. So, in arrangement view, if I zoom all the way out, you'll see all these songs are back to back right next to each other. Here's what you don't want. If you're in a rehearsal and the singer says, hey, let's add eight bars here, or let's add uh, 16 bars here, double the chorus, whatever, what you really don't want to do in arrangement view is, so down here, there is a tempo automation line. So, if you want to add eight bars here, you can go in and grab the eight bars or whatever. Uh, sorry about that, wrong key command. Grab the eight bars and uh, try to copy and then go here and try to add them and drag them over, but you're gonna start, you see how these tracks are running into this next song? You don't want that. You don't want that at all. So, the easier way to do it is, because then you would have to move every song 
to the right and you'd have to switch the automation time. You don't want to do that. That's a crazy amount of work and you're definitely going to screw it up. What you all, all you have to do is hit Command Shift D and it duplicates the time. As you see down here, tempo automation moved with it. It's a beautiful thing, okay? So, and to undo it, you can hit Command Shift Backspace does the same thing. As you can see, this second song over here moves with it. It's perfect. Duplicate time is amazing. And that is how, in arrangement view, you should add and take away parts. Okay, we're on our last tip, tip number five. All right, tip number five. So, this one is a super easy one too, but I guarantee it will save you a ton of time and headache down the road. So, Every song that I put into Ableton, if I have an original MP3 of the full song, because tracks are a stripped down version of the original song, right? It's only to supplement your playing live. So uh, if you have two guitar players, a drummer, a bass player, and a singer, it might have a little bit of keys, a little bit of extra percussion. It's not gonna have, you know, tra the backing tracks you play to aren't gonna have everything in them. So every now and then you'll be in a rehearsal where someone says, hey, what are the parts? What are the, you know, what are you supposed to be playing there? Blah, 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 blah. What does the track do? And what'll happen, I guarantee, is you're in a rehearsal setting and no one has an auxiliary cable, so someone pulls out their phone and has to scroll through it and you take all of this time finding the original MP3, playing it, and it's never ideal. So don't do that. What you should do is if you're using Arrangement View, you know, uh, this song doesn't have markers in it, but if you're using Arrangement View and you're in the verse or the chorus or whatever and you want to hear it, you, you're already, when you're playing through, you're already in the spot in the tracks that, you know, the question came up. So all you have to do is have a reference track up top. So as you see up here, I'll play the track. One, two, three, four. That's what the track sounds like, right? So... I have up here a track that's grayed out. What that means is that the clip is disabled. So if I turn it on by hitting O and I enable that track over there from the mixer, that's the full MP3 of the song with drums in it with everything. So now all of us can listen to it really quick and say, okay, oh, that's what goes on in the track. Now the most important part is when you're done, I like to disable the clip so that it doesn't play and turn off that track up top. As you can see for the sixth song, I have it disabled and that track is off. I like to have two forms of uh, muting that track so that I can be extra sure that when we're using tracks and actually playing live, no one's gonna hear that track because what you really don't want is the MP3 playing while you guys are playing a show. No one paid money to listen to the MP3 be played over top of you guys playing. That is terrible. That is not what you want. Okay, so those are my top five Ableton tips. They're just super quick, super easy. They're not like the end all be all of how to use Ableton, but these are things that I think will make your life a lot, a lot easier. So, like I said, go to timbulemusic.com slash Ableton Top 5, and that'll bring to you, you a blog post that has a little ebook PDF thing of a recap of all this stuff and some extra resources to go into a little more detail about how I'm doing some of this stuff. So check that PDF out. It'll definitely help you. It'll make it so that you can refer back to this information without having to pull this video up and listen to me talk. It'll just be right there for you to check out. Um, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time.